Hello and welcome everyone, my name is Babby and today we're playing Dead in Bermuda. Now if you take a look at the lower left corner, you see that this is a version 1.0 of the demo, this is not the full version, but we're going to play that as soon as the game is released. Now Dead in Bermuda is a survival management game with RPG and adventure elements. You lead a team of 8 survivors from a plane crash and assign them with tasks, gain experience, develop your survival skills, research and craft new items, you explore the island and you solve the mysteries going about. So, yeah, let's take a closer look by actually starting a game. There we go, we're going to hit New Game. We're going to select a Profile, we're going to go with the Empty Profile, because obviously everything is going to be empty. You see a little pl plane here, we hear some nice music in the background. Uh, what basically is going to happen is that the plane is going to crash on this island. We don't really need to see the cinematic, I guess. Um, yeah, there we go. Alright, the game is now loading, obviously. Don't know how to tell you that, but it takes a while. But uh, you'll, you'll get your money's worth, believe me. Especially in this case, since the version is free. Uh, setting up camp. And a few hours later, after the crash. Hey everyone, let's regroup and ting, a talk a bit. Thank you everyone for helping making a camp. That's heartwarming to see we are sticking together after the, you know, the horror that happened. Let's take a moment to introduce ourselves. Since we live into, since we live together for a while now, I'm Alice, 45, and this is my husband Robert. We came from Montreal. I love hiking and, and cooking. Pleased to meet you all. You can call me Bob, guys. Do you know what to say? I like to tinker a bit at home. Oh, and going fishing on Sundays. Oh, thanks. So many... So, my name is Alejandro. I'm 32. You all know me, I think. I was the manager at the holiday resort you are staying in. It was my flight to, to my first holidays in 10 years, so... Yeah. Hi, I'm Dr. Bethany Winters, coming from London. If you need medical help, come see me. Dot, dot, dot. Uh, my dad doesn't speak much. Please excuse him. I'm Ilyana, 16. We're coming from a small village in Russia. Uh, and Julia married my dad last summer. Dot, dot, dot. Yeah, as if she doesn't really like that, isn't it? Hello. Uh, I might... I, I should do accents, but I'm, I'm horrible at certain accents. I mean, I, I guess I could do Russian, but the rest of them... Uh... Hello, everything's already said. Don't expect me to reveal my age or I should have to silence you forever. I don't know, it, it's... No, that doesn't feel right. <laughs> are we finished? We are wasting precious time. We must organize ourselves. I'm Jacob and I know how to survive in a hostile environment. I've been preparing for this eventuality all of my life. Well, you were all usel uselessly crying, wow. That's, uh, that's quite a comforting uh, thing to say. I went around and found a large water tank containing clear water and enough resources to make a fire. You're right, Jacob. But before that, I suggest that we take a moment of silence in the honor of those who didn't survive the crash. They will haunt my nights until I leave this world. Oh, what a pessimist. I, I guess you're kind of, um, <laughs> you're kind of, uh, you're inclined to do that after a plane crash. But yeah, you did survive it after all, so I guess you should be should be um, happy. But yeah, uh, you see uh, stats right here. You see the effects from the crash. We gained ten woods, uh, two stones, and a tinder. Then of course the water tank, uh, tank that um, Jacob has made, and we see that the depression of everyone is going up. Not surprisingly. All right, let's hit okay. This is the camp view, where you can assign characters to activities they will perform during the day. You can move your mouse left and right to view all of the camp. Characters are assigned to action slots. Right now, they are all assigned to the fire camp's action slot, which is talk. To move a character, you can either drag and drop him on a new slot, or right-click him on click again on the desired action slot. Move a character from the fire camp to scavenge slot at the plane, far left of the camp. <clears throat> now, I know a lot about this game, because I played about seven hours, so I kind of know how, how to do this. But uh, it seemed that, that um, the stats of the characters are randomized, so we actually might want to look into stats and see who's best at scavenging. Because uh, you, you, you want to send out these people uh, to scavenge missions, obviously, to yield the best results. Uh, let's see, we've got scavenging right under utility. Uh, yeah, it's obviously different from what I've seen. Uh, it seems that 
Alice is good at it, but Yuri is a bit better, so we're going to send out Yuri, uh, which was actually the case for me as well. This character will search the crash site for useful resources, but beware. Seeing the dead passengers' corpses will increase the depression state. There are five states in the game, hunger, depression, sickness, injury and fatigue. If any of them reaches 100%, the related character will die. Well, that's good to know. Next, move two other characters on the resource slots at the library. Right, so we want to assign the people that have the highest knowledge skill. Um, you, you can uh, assign the ones with the highest learning skill, I think. But this, this only increases the pacing at which they level. So you want to go with um, knowledge. Uh, from what I know, Jacob has the highest knowledge. Yeah, this was also the case in my uh, private game. So we're going to send out Jacob and Ilyana. We're going to send both of them there. There we go. You're going to do research at the, <laughs> the library, quote unquote. There we go. These characters will search for new crafting plants. Plans. Once the progress gauge reaches 100%, you'll discover a new recipe. Well, that's quite, quite uh, intuitive. The efficiency of every task is tied to a specific skill. Every character has different strengths, and yeah, we, we knew this. Okay, we're going to have to move three characters through the explore jungle options. So we're going to take a look at um, who's best skilled for the tasks. Let's see. 41 for Alejandro. I'm going to go with Alejandro. That's the European uh, Spanish pronunciation. Uh, I, know, I think he's actually from Barcelona, so that, that'll be all right. Let's see. Th 38, 69. So, obviously, Ellis, um, Julia, and Alejandro. Alejandro, Julia, and Ellis, right? Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it was that case. It, it was the case. Now, certain characters are going to have skills that uh, are not too useful at the moment because you don't, you simply don't have the utilities. Uh, but for now, we'll, we'll give him the task that they are most suited for. These ones will explore the island. You can select which squares to explore by clicking on the jungle and then clicking on the corresponding action in the action wheel. Else, they will explore randomly. I'm just going to keep them. Uh, I'm just going to let them keep uh, exploring randomly because there's really no rhyme or reason to uh, whatever the island contains. It's all randomized. Last thing to do now: make a fire. To craft new things for your camp, click on the workshop, then on choose crafting recipe and select a recipe. So we do have something at research. I guess we don't really have a choice. We're just going to send out Rob or Bob. I think I thought it was named Robert, but he might be Bob as well. Good. Each crafting recipe uh, consumes resources you can get by scavenging the plane out on the island. On the island. Oh, and the island. To unlock new recipes, you must discover them first by the research action at the library. So basically what they are doing. You conveniently have the exact amount of resources to craft the fire camp. So the crafting will start once you assign characters to the craft action. Alright, let's uh, assign Bob and um, Dr. Winters. What was the actual name? I, I forgot. But it, it says Winters, so it's fine. Okay, it looks good. Everyone is assigned to, the ta to a task. Let's now advance the time and see the results of their action. The game is decomposed into two phases of daytime, during which you can freely assign characters to tasks and one phase for the night. Alright, I, I want to actually see what their um, crafting skills... Because I would have to guess that Yuri is a good crafter as well, but I... I uh, like I said, it could be randomized. Alright, Jacob's decent. Yeah, Yuri is best alongside... Oh, Jacob, actually. All right. All right, that is different from my personal game. So, yeah, let's advance time. See what what, um, what our actions will result in. We've got some wood, rope, tasty meals, meals, fruit, and a pillow. We're going to need that stuff. I don't think that stuff is randomized because I'm pretty sure you need that to um, build a certain thing. But we'll, we'll, I will wait until I spoil that. Spoil that. Alright, this doesn't also seem to take uh, a lot of effort because <clears throat> it's finished instantly. Normally, you wouldn't finish uh, crafting recipes instantly. We finished craft crafting the recipe fire camp. They will definitely help. We managed to make a fireplace with a few rocks and started a fire with wood and a special mushroom called Tinder. As if that is a mushroom, sure. You can assign characters to the talk option. Yeah, we're definitely going to do that. Is this lowers uh, depression and fatigue for a little bit. Now, the higher the skill uh, for characters, the less fatigue they are going to gain um, after each phase. 
So if you have uh, characters that are very skilled at a certain thing, they wouldn't really gain a lot of fatigue from it. We need a shelter to recover from the fatigue we gain by working hard all day under the sun. Obviously we do need that. We've got the sleeping area. It's going to be right there, I think. No, a little bit further, actually. Ah, we discovered a new area. Not surprising, not surprising. All right, like you see, some characters gain more fatigue. That is exactly what I was talking about. The more skilled characters will gain less. Uh, at least if they have the corresponding uh, skills. That's the basics. Have you noticed how the time has passed and the results of your character's actions? You should have discovered a new crafting recipe and scavenged enough resources to craft it. Right, let's uh, craft that thing. First, what I want to do, though, is when I take a look at that island, I want to see what is located there. And we see a little wooden crate. Now, we can either search or scavenge some wood. Wood is not that hard to come by, I believe. So we're going to do search. Although, maybe in the beginning it might be. But we're going to do search. And we might want to pick the one that has the highest scavenge um, skill. You see it right here because it's relevant data. So that's quite convenient. Although it shows you uh, other relevant data as well. Which probably also modifies it. Julia is best at fighting and stealth. So, I don't know. I, th I think still though we want to send out Yuri. I mean a beast like that. He's not easily uh, damaged. Uh, well, damage hurts. <laughs> as if it's a machine, right? You probably open the crate and search for something useful. We've got four cups of coffee, one spices, four medicinal plants, one chocolate box. These are not too uh, too shabby things, and we can still scavenge for wood. I'm going to wait for that though, because we don't want to exhaust um, we don't want to exhaust Yuri too much, because that will that will kind of decrease the amount of stuff he will, um, or that will decrease the efficiency of which it, he works. Uh, that is the case with all characters. If that fatigue and depression is too high, it will um, negatively affect the uh, effectiveness. It will negatively affect the effectiveness. Yeah, it will negatively affect the effectiveness of the task they do. So you want to watch out uh, when doing that. Let's see. Let's choose the sleeping area. Great. Crafting is important in the game, as it will add new possibilities of actions within the camp. So don't forget it. You should have picked up some food for tonight in the plane, so this won't be a problem for today. You also have some fruits that you can convert into water supplies. Click on the water tank, check your water supplies, and convert some fruits into water. Alright, will do. Yeah, water is kind of vital in this game, as is in real life. Um, but you, you scavenge for... or you scavenge, you, you either scavenge, or you just uh, cut fruit. You, you can find it in a variety of ways and convert them to water, obviously. There we go. Water is very important. If your supplies reach nil, its game is over. One can't survive very long without water. Well, that makes sense. So make a good use of those fruits. You can also eat them, but I found that they are not as valuable as food as they are um, for making water. Your characters are a bit depressed right now. You can lower the depression by making them talk around the fire camp. Alright, so from what I recall, uh, Alejandro is one character that gains... A terrific amount of depression, but Yuri is uh, most depressed because he has been uh, scavenging around uh, people. So we're going to put him there. His discussion skill is not too, uh, too well developed, but I'm going to put him there with Alejandro. Because uh, his discussion skill ought to be very good. There we go. And that might actually help him a bit. You can lower uh, the status of your characters by different means. One of the more direct approaches is to use special items on that for an instant effect. In order to do that, click on a character and then use item action. Actually, we might just want to uh, lower their stuff like this because we got a cup of coffee. Although, yeah, we, yeah, we could, we could, um, we could get rid of Yuri's depression by doing that. Don't forget to use your special items. They will make your life many times easier, and they are available to everyone. You also discovered a new area on the island. Let's see what's there. Yeah, I already kind of did that, didn't I? Still, we're going to have to revisit that, it seems. When you send your characters exploring to the island, you unlock new areas that can be visited at any time. On each square, there's an object, and their location are randomized on each new game. You can freely interact with the object. It doesn't pass time, but instead you have a chance at being attacked by a nasty beast, depending on your stealthy... Oh, on, your, on how stealthy the chosen character is. When you are finished with the object, go back to the camp and click exit. All right, you know what? We're gonna um, we're gonna actually get the wood. 
We're gonna negate all the depression Yuri has so that he can be put to craft stuff. Uh, that'll be more effective than uh, having him talk with Alejandro. And um, we're gonna make him scavenge. There we go. You can actually click to make time pass faster, but there we go. We feel because our stealth is very low. I mean, a beast like that, he'll be easily noti notified or noted by um, monsters. You start breaking the crate and scavenging the plank. Oh, we've got Nils as well. That's uh, convenient. So, Yuri, what you're going to do is you're going uh, to craft. Uh, I guess, you know, I guess we're going to have you guys sit here because we want to lower their depression. We could put Alejandro to explore, but the thing is, you can't really talk on your own. So we're, gonna, we're just going to leave stuff like this. I think this is best. We don't want to um, over scavenge the plane because food can actually um, turn bad. And that's the thing you don't want. So we're going to end our phase right here. There we go. We lose a pillow, five ropes, and ten wood. We're still not done. Uh, we're probably going to have to put them there for three more turns. Research does go very, very fast. I'd have to guess... Um, I'd have to guess because these are the uh, beginning research. These are the early research, so these are quite easy to um, understand. Ah, yeah, all right, yeah. You discover traits over time of characters. Let's see, scavenging skill progresses faster times two. I did not have this one, actually, uh, when I was playing. So uh, that's quite kind of funny. And their relationship also increases. Like you see right there, the heart uh, is the relationship between two characters. It can be very good, it can be very bad. And it affects events uh, over time, like these. Okay, good work, everyone. I know it's hard, but we managed to scavenge some food in that damn plane. I'm sure there is more if we continue to search the planes. The planes? I thought there was only one plane. But it will only last for a few days after that. We will be on our own. Anyone knows how to hunt? Well, that's kind of the reason I didn't scavenge it twice. I do, but not with my bare hands. We'll need to find or craft some tools. Let's share the food we found right now. We should ration our daily meals. And water too. An average man does, dies after only three days without water. Yeah, as if only a doctor would know that. I know that as well. Thank you. A frightening thought. Don't worry. We can make juice out of fruits. The island is covered in jungle. We'll find plenty. Yes, that was a very good idea you had today, Liana. We'll need plenty of those if we want to survive until help comes. What help? <clears throat> we should at least try to reach the jungle. Maybe someone lives there. Yeah, he's now getting a bit depressed because he's not really... Uh, he tried to be optimistic for his own sake, but he is kind of a pessimist. Yes, and if we find a big tiger, we're dead. Wow. Well, tomorrow is another day. Good night, everyone. Good night, Alice. Uh, right here, you see hunger increasing, obviously, because people want to eat. And you see fatigue also increasing, I believe. No, not fatigue. Depression. This stuff happens, I, I guess. Each night or almost, or almost, your characters will chat with each other. There are conditions to trigger these dialogues and randomized elements, so you won't have the same dialogues each new game. I, I know. You must now share the food between your characters. Each food has its own nutritious value. And perishable food has a chance to degrade each night. So choose well. Alright, needless to say, over time you'll be able to get uh, better sources of food. You can actually gain very good, very, very good meals um, quite easily as soon as you can actually cook them. But we want to use this up as, as much as possible because uh, like, uh, like I said, it is perishable. So, yeah. Alright, you have the most hunger as well. Oh, we can actually probably fill everyone. That's convenient. There we go. So, some people have more appetite than others. That's uh, one of those things in this game. Some people have more needs. Some people have more skills in certain things. It's all varied. And that, that, makes, uh, that makes it so far a lot of fun. Uh, let's end the turn right here. These are the effects um, that are going on after each night. A fire intensity, which we're going to have to increase uh, each time it uh, declines. Water supplies and depression. There we go. Did you notice? Perishable food has a chance. Yeah, we know that already. Uh, thank you very much. 
But yeah, that, that is Dead in Bermuda for today. I'll see you guys next time, and I hope you enjoy this. Make sure to leave a comment uh, and tell me what you think of this game, and make sure to leave a like if you liked. Um, I'll see you guys around. As always, have a good one.